something of an incredible job. 27 countries coming to an agreed position over what to do about this financial crisis, all the stronger for it. Not at all, no. The original plan of Sarkozy's over two weeks ago was that the EU would act as one, we would all throw the money into a big central pot and the EU would manage the rescue of the banks. And of course what happened? The Irish said no, we don't want that, we'll do our own thing. Even the Germans said no, we'll do our own thing. So what you've seen in fact is people acting in their own national interest and what happened last week was an agreement between sovereign states. So I think that uh, Mr Sarkozy somehow claiming this is a great victory for the European model is completely and utterly wrong. But, you know, OK, yes, there have been odd stresses and strains where the Irish have, you know, guaranteed all, all bank deposits. But, but what you've come up with at the end of it is an agreed plan that does Good. seem... Good. Great. I'm happy. I don't just want European countries to do that. I'd like to see globally there be agreements on how we do these things. And there is a difference. But easier there because is a we're part of the EU. There is a difference between a government acting in its own interest and giving away the ability to make that decision to somebody else. And what Mr Sarkozy now wants, he now wants the Lisbon Treaty ratified. He wants a Treasury Department set up in Frankfurt so that in future the British government would not be able to act on things like this. So better to be plucky Iceland on the outside? Well, you know, the Icelandics have had a complete disaster. But thank goodness, in Britain's case, we've not been part of the euro. We've had a bit more freedom of action, but maybe not as much as one thinks. I mean, just an example. We have put a five-year freeze on dividend payments on ordinary bank shares as a result of the bailout. The Swiss the other day bailed out UBS. In their case, there's no five-year freeze on dividends. This is because the European Union has told us how we should now manage our banks, whereas the Swiss, being outside the EU, can act in their own interest. Hang on, wasn't the dividends a, a matter agreed by the Treasury in, in, in negotiations with the well, Financial Services Authority we thought as so. their measure? We thought so, but now we found that in fact, no, they were on the telephone to the European Commission receiving instructions. But you were the sort of person who would come on this programme in the past and say, look at plucky Iceland, strong independent country, able to govern its own affairs, and, you know, outside the protection of the EU... Well, uh, I'm sorry, but the EU hasn't actually protected anybody during this recent collapse. In fact, you know, the EU, through all the financial services legislation that the EU has put upon us over the course of the last 10 years, not a single investor has been protected. Um, what, do you th what do you say to what Phil Woolis has been saying about the need for tougher action on immigration. Do you buy that? Well, I mean, I've been selling the idea of a points-based system for many, many years, so it's refreshing to see a Labour minister talking what sounds like good common sense. The difficulty is, it's all unenforceable. There isn't much point, really, in trying to control numbers that come into the country from outside the EU, whilst at the same time you're saying to hundreds of millions of people, as many of you as want, can come into Britain. So, he can't cap the numbers of people coming into this country all the while we're part of an EU. But that works both ways, doesn't it? I mean, you you just take yourself going off to work in Brussels. Well, well I don't think that's a very good example. Um, I'd I mean, I'd rather not be there. No. Okay. But, listen. But you, what's you know the point I make. You no, know, I'm no, able no, to. No. The point is, we're a rich country. Romania and Bulgaria are poor countries. We've got m a much better social services system. We have been a magnet since 2004 for huge numbers of people, and there's nothing to say really that that's going to stop. And when there's an economic downturn, those people will melt away. I very much doubt it. I mean, but the, isn't the evidence of that already happening? No. The economic downturn in some eurozone countries could be very very much worse than what we're going through. The point about this is we haven't got any control over it whatsoever, and even Wallace's proposals for what we should do with the non-EU world are about to be overtaken because one of Sarkozy's big plans is that in December we should have a common immigration policy for the whole of the European Union. Now, we saw Peter Mandelson on the television uh, earlier on this, uh, this morning, our former European uh, Union uh, Commissioner. We've got a new one going out there, uh, Baroness Ashton, who yeah. was leader of the Lords, and you're, and I know, part of the sort of panel vetting uh, tomorrow. You don't think she's up to the job. Why? Well, here we are. We've been through this massive credit crunch. We've got a contraction in global trade and the real genuine threat of protectionism coming back. Baroness Ashton, whatever she's done in her life, she's never worked in the private sector. She's no experience of trade and business. And at this crucial time, given that the job is the most important trade job in the world, now is not the time for a novice. In a, in a word, can you block her? Uh, the Parliament can, and I think there is a chance that we will. And what happens then? Uh, well, I've put, a, I've put a resolution down to say that I'm not saying she shouldn't be a commissioner at all. I mean, given the fact that she managed to get the Lisbon Treaty through the House of Lords without a referendum, she's obviously got some political skills, but she should not be the trade commissioner. This needs to be a big...